All right, so this is where the arrangement feature is also going to become very handy because it allows me to have the song set off into certain sections where I can then try to figure out where I want my automation to play a part in that particular section. For instance, in verse one, I might want more of one instrument than another in verse two to make it a little more engaging and exciting for the listener. So as I begin this process of automating, we're going to keep that in mind. Now, there are several different ways that we can use automation within our projects. We could use an external control surface with faders and knobs, or we could actually just use our mouse. As not everyone has an external control surface, I'm going to go ahead and use my mouse because everyone does have access to a mouse at least. So let's go ahead and begin with the intro. I'm going to open up the arranger section now and play the intro. Okay, the intro sounds, honestly, in my opinion, good. So I'm going to go ahead and move to verse one. You've got a sacred heart, but you don't know how to use it. Always let in strangers take it and abuse it. And you're so, you're so okay, so on the initial bass intro, as well as the drums, I want to go ahead and have them kick in a little bit louder at first, just to give that impression that something has changed within the mix. This is also gonna create that excitement that I was talking about earlier. So I'm gonna open up the automation lane for the volume on the bass track, and we'll begin with it. Keep in mind that these automation variables do not have to be large sweeping movements, but a lot of times just the subtlety of a dB or two can really create a lot of interest and actually change the sound quite a bit. So I'm going to go to the very beginning of where this bass actually kicks in. I'm going to make the waveform a little bit larger so I know exactly where to do this at. And zoom in just a bit. So this is the point where I want the bass to go back to the normal volume that it's at now. So I'll place a node there and one just in front of it. I'll place a node where I want it to rise and one just in front of it as well. And then all I have to do is simply move this one. I'm going to say plus one and a half dBs roughly. As you can see, it's very subtle, but it's just enough to add that little bit of extra something. Now I'm also going to do this on the kick drum. I'm not going to do it on both of them, but rather just one of them. I only want the initial transient of the kick to come in, and I'm going to increase it by plus 1.7 dBs. Okay, yet again, very subtle. I'm also going to do this on the stereo overheads, I believe. And we're going to increase that by 2 dBs. Okay, now the next thing that I notice is there is a slide guitar and uh, a little bit of an electric guitar variable type thing that's going on in the left side of the stereo field that I want to bring out a little more. Let's take a listen. Right there. So I'm going to bring that up just a tad bit. 
by 3 dBs just to accentuate that and then it'll drop back down to where it was before. Okay, and then right here, I'm hearing something else kick in. I believe it's this Hammond. Maybe it's the Wurlitzer. Okay. Now I'm going to raise where that comes in just a tad bit. And I also noticed whenever it did come in that it introduced a little bit of sort of like a honkiness in the mid-range. So I want to go and address that now as well. And it looks like I've kind of exhausted my uh, quad curve equalizer here. So I think I'm just going to use a stock So I'm just going to use the stock Sonatus FX equalizer to sort of find that hunt and pack and then dip it down. Sounds pretty good. Now we're going to go to chorus one. Don't go searching. Okay, so immediately I hear that slide guitar comes in. I'm going to raise that by just about 4 dBs. Let's hear how that sounds. Okay, still working within the frame of chorus one. Let's go ahead and take another listen. Don't go searching. You're supposed to be formed by the red one. But you just want someone more. So I think during this portion, I'm actually going to uh, drop this Wurlitzer just until this chorus is over. So this whole entire portion right here, I'm just going to drop that down by about 2 dBs, and then I'm going to actually bring in the Hammond, and I'm going to bring it up by about 2 dBs. All right, let's take a listen to that.
Okay, sounds good. Let's go ahead and start with verse 2 now. You have to love yourself. Now, at the beginning of verse 2, there is a bass slide in that I want to accentuate. Right here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that here. We're going to bring that up by nearly two dBs. You have to okay, that was just a little bit too much. Bring it down by a half dB. You have to love yourself okay, so it doesn't sound quite as natural as I wanted it to. I think it's just because it kind of fades out a little too fast. Okay, so by deleting those nodes, it actually helps it to sort of fade out a little more linear. Let's try that. You have to love yourself before anyone else can. And wait for the moment when you least expect it. To get swept off of your feet and feel something magical. We're so used to tragedy. Okay, so at this point is, I believe, where the strings begin to come in. Yeah, I'd like to go ahead and automate those strings to make them sound just a little bit more natural. So the best way that I can do this is actually click the automation right enable. And by holding the shift key on my keyboard, it will allow me to make fine tune adjustments to the volume while it's playing. By having the right enabled, all of the fine tune adjustments that I make while it's playing will be then copied after I click stop. You have to love yourself before anyone else can. And wait for the moment when you least expect it to get swept off of your feet and feel something magical. They're so Okay. Now, as you can see, all of the nodes have been made, and by clicking this off, now it's going to read all of that information that I've just placed on there. You have to love yourself before anyone else can. And wait for the moment when you least expect it to get swept off of your feet and feel something magical. Okay. The other thing that I'm hearing while that verse is going on, there towards the end of the verse, there's some guitar stuff that's happening with the delays that really are just kind of selling that initial uh, crescendo of that second verse. And so I want to accentuate those as well. And it's about right here. So I'm going to turn that up just a tad bit. And I'll have it come back down right before chorus two. Oh, 
Let's listen to that again. You have to love yourself before anyone else can and wait for the moment when you least expect it to get swept off of your feet and feel something magical where you're so used to tragedy your heart is entangled things people do to feel Awesome. Sounds great. Now let's go ahead and move on to chorus two. Okay, so immediately I hear that the slide guitar has kind of taken precedence in chorus two. And I want to give it some more room to breathe, so I'm going to allow it to do this. Just gonna bring that up by about four dBs. Let's see if that's too much. Okay, so far so good. Now we're going to accentuate the bass guitar's uh, little bit of a lead line here that it gives. And I think it's about right here, but we'll listen and find out. Yep, that was it. So I'm going to go ahead and lead into it here. And by putting these um, double nodes here, it just ensures that the original portion of this doesn't get moved from where I had it set to begin with, which would be the default setting that it's on now. Um, it just allows me to make movements and adjustments to this area without it actually adjusting these. Now, do you need both of the nodes? No but it can help as well. Okay, brought that up about 2 dBs. Let's take a listen. Okay, that's just a little bit over the top. I don't want to accentuate it quite that much. I'm going to bring that down just uh, just to let it come up about 1 dB. Let's see if that makes a difference. Okay, much better. And I think I'm still going to bring it down maybe even just a tad more. Okay. All right, now we're going to move on to uh, the crescendo. Okay, so in order to sell this drop out of instruments even more, I'm now going to automate the volume of the entire track up just a hair at this point so that when everything drops out, it'll be more noticeable to the human ear. Now, the way that I'm going to achieve this is to actually click this arrow here, which will show or hide the bus pane. Now, from here, we can create an automation lane on the mix bus itself. However, if I was to automate the volume itself, it could potentially then cause the limiter to go into a clipping region, even though it is limited because the master fader would override the plugin due to the way that Cakewalk's signal flow works. So in order to increase the volume without introducing any clipping, I'm actually going to automate the adaptive limiters threshold.
as of right now, it's set to negative 4.4 dBs. So at this point here, which is the beginning of the crescendo, I'm going to insert a node and one just behind it. And then at the point when the instruments drop, I'm going to insert a node and one just in front of it. In this instance, I would need a uh, slight dip because the lower the threshold, the louder. So I'm going to cause a slight dip by an extra dB. Let's hear how that sounds. And I also noticed that the crescendo actually um, kind of plays out a little bit longer than what we have it here. So I'm going to elongate that. And again, I want to make sure that I double click this area. Okay. And instead of using this option over here, I'm just going to go ahead and play it from where it is. Kind of give me a little bit of a lead in. Okay, so at this particular point here, uh, another thing that I want to do is when the, all of those instruments drop out, it needs to be very sparsely populated with the instruments themselves. So I'm actually going to remove more instruments than what's here now. Okay, so for instance, I'm going to go ahead and remove this portion of the slide guitar. That should give it a little bit more room to breathe. And I'm also going to just automate the fade in and fade out of that to make it a little bit more natural sounding. I'm going to do that likewise on these tracks here. And I'm just going to automate the fade out times. Do that likewise here. All right, let's give that a listen and see how that affected the, uh, the actual instrumentation being dropped out right there. When nobody else worked out And they'll pick up the pieces of Okay, definitely sounds a lot more natural. I'm going to go ahead and have this slide guitar drop out a little bit faster than that. As well as this uh, left and the right delay. Need to make sure I take care of both of those. Okay, also going to make sure that this fades out properly here. So the way that I did that was I selected the first track, held the shift button, and selected the next track. That then highlights both of those waveforms within those tracks. Then by holding the control button, I can simply click and drag where I'd like for the crossfade to be on both tracks at once. Okay, so during this portion of time, the strings actually, I feel like, need to come up a little bit more just to fill in that dead space. And so uh, when these drop out, 
I'm going to have the strings come up to fill that space back in. Just a tad bit. We're going to go with 4 dBs now just to kind of hear how that sounds. And then we'll just kind of go from there. Okay, so that sounded good, but it sounded like the strings kind of faded out just a little too fast. So I'm going to bring this over here and just kind of increase this a little bit more here. Let's listen to how that sounds. <laughs> Nobody else worked out And they'll pick up the pieces of your Okay So that definitely sounds a little bit better I'm going to go ahead and increase the hall reverb on that Just to push it back a little more One more listen Don't go searching Someday you'll be found And it'll make sense when nobody else worked out And they'll pick up the pieces of Your heart on the ground But you'll forget all of it Okay Now where there is a little bit of a gap there Where it looks like the strings maybe weren't played out completely As you can see it gets really quiet Just in this area I need to bring that up just right there to get that to fill out until it comes back in. This seems like kind of a dramatic boost, but it's actually going to help sell the point here. Someday you'll be found and it'll make sense when nobody else worked out and they'll pick up the pieces of your heart. Okay. So now it sounds like this is a bit much. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that note, let that be a more smooth transition. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this down just a tad bit. Try that again. Someday you'll be found and it'll make sense when nobody else Okay, that sounds a lot better. Now also for that particular point, uh, when it builds up to that point, the drums are actually doing a, a sort of a bell hit that I really want to accentuate during this uh, build, crescendo build right here. So one way that I'm going to do this is I want these drums to be more dynamic anyway. So I'm actually going to bring up the drums bus itself and we're going to automate the volume on the drums bus. So when the drums first come in right here, it seems as if everything is fine. When taking into account the dynamics of the tracks that surround the drums, um, we're going to go ahead and give them a listen again just to see if they need to come up a little bit more right here. All right, so in light of the fact that all the tracks at this point have already been uh, messed with to some extent, uh, the drums have actually dropped in volume. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that up to zero from negative 1.6. That should bring them up to speed, hopefully. Okay, that sounds better. And now I'm just going to go ahead and automate the volume on the rest of the tracks. Uh, at specific points. I know, for instance, here in chorus one, I want the drums to come up and hit just a little bit harder in the choruses. So I can simply just go here to chorus one and go ahead and automate in maybe one to two dBs. 
And I'll drop that back down when it comes to verse 2. Let's try 1 dB and see how that sounds. Okay, so whenever she says found here, I'm going to go ahead and bring it down at that point. So it's about right here. I'll then delete this node and you'll see that turns that into a smoother transition there. That sounds better. Now we're going to bring it back over here to chorus two and do essentially the same thing. However, this is going to go into the crescendo. So uh, we're actually going to have a little bit more of a build coming out of this than we did to begin with. So we'll do a 1 dB gain increase on the bus for the drums and see how that sounds. So right here at the crescendo, let's see, this is at plus one dBs. This is dropped down by point to point seven. Okay, so I'm gonna bring that up to one to match that. And then from here, I'm actually gonna bring this up just a little bit more to match what's going on here. I want to accentuate that bell as it's hitting here on this crescendo. So I'm going to bring the entire drum bus up by another dB and let it gradually fall out to the drop. Hear how that sounds? Okay, that sounded better. Uh, one thing I did notice is that as this was going, uh, now it seems as if the slide guitar is kind of overpowering a little bit. I'll bring that back down. Take out about two dBs. Let's try that again. And one more thing that I need to do is on the drums bust itself, need to adjust the reverb sends. Gonna bring in a little bit more of the medium plate. Okay, let's give that a sound.
the end, I have some acoustic guitar plugs that I'd really like to kind of get to poke through a little bit better. So I'm going to come up here and find those. Those are right here. Okay, so it starts right about here. Do that on both of these tracks. Bring them up by about 3 dBs or close to it. And I'll just leave it as a slow and gradual decline going here. <laughs> 